And so many are leaving us at such a rapid pace. One day we would say, here today, gone tomorrow, now it's here today, gone today. And I always say, every day above ground is a good day. Amen, somebody. I don't take it for granted. I don't take it for granted. But I thank God for life, health, and strength. We thank God for uh, our illustrious guests and, and pioneers, the Mitchell family this morning. Amen. We thank God for those who have traveled far and near. God, even right now, we ask that you give uh, those who are on their way traveling mercies. Even right now, in the name of Jesus, we, we pray even for Brother Sam Moore and his family at the loss of his family member and Brother Kyle. And we, we say that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. We say that we are here in the ministry of presence. Sometimes there are not adequate words to talk to or say to those who are grieving and mourning. But just the presence, just knowing that we are here, says that we love you. And that you need us, you know how to call us. And so this morning, not going to be before you long, but I'm going to be strong and before I even start, I want to pray for that family on 95. As I was coming down 95, that held up traffic this morning. We pray for speedy recovery. We pray for healing. We, we pray that God will allow their golden moments to roll on. We, we pray God take the wheel. Because oftentimes it's not us. But it's the other driver. And so we pray for the other driver as well. But this morning, as we acknowledge Merlin Emancipation Day, I raise, Brother Sam, thank you for the text, the reading of the text this morning. I raise the psalm that the abolitionist Frederick Douglass was so moved by in his work for liberation of not just black people, but all people. And uh, in reading uh, his history, he said that he was motivated by this one song, Psalms 137, because you do know that that scripture, if you can apply it to yourself, is no good. What does a 6,000 year old scripture have to do with you? That's what we need to ask ourselves. This is the same book that slave masters use to justify slave. And yet the enslaved took the same book who were denied the right to read and write and liberated themselves. Amen, somebody. If the text cannot speak to you, then you have no need to use it. Psalms 137 says, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept, when we remember Zion, we hung our hops upon the willows in the midst thereof. 
For there are those who carry us away captive, ask of us a song. And those who plundered us requested mirth, saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion. The word came back from this oppressed people saying, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land if I forget not you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. If I do not remember you, let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not exalt Jerusalem among my chief joy. Remember, O oh Lord, against the sons of Edom, the day of Jerusalem, who raised it and to its foundation. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen, somebody. I like to tag this text, the few moments of the mind from the sermonic theme. We come this far by faith. We, we, we say, we say, we say, we say, we come this far by faith. Let us pray. Father God, even right now, we know that you're a God and there's no God beside you, and we say thank you. We thank you, God, that you didn't have to do it, but you did it. You died on Calvary that we might have a right to eternal life, and we say thank you. Oh, God, right now, set worn down that you might be lifted up, magnified, and glorified. And after all is said and done, let somebody be touched, healed, set free, and delivered by your word. This is your servant's prayer. Amen, somebody. Brothers and sisters, when we look at this particular text, Psalms, 137, although it speaks about the ancient children of Israel, it really shows a comparison and a parallel to we who also have gone through our own African Holocaust. Over 400 years ago or better, we were taken 9,000 miles against our will from the shores of West Africa. We were, we were robbed of our God. We were robbed of the knowledge of self. We were denied the right to read and to write and to know our names. And not only that, we were denied the right to know our God. And yet, Christianity did not start in Western civilization. Because there is a Bible that's older than this Bible called the Ethiopian Bible. And the Bible tells us that Ethiopia shall stretch forth its wings. That there are some uh, references to Africa, ancient Africa in the Bible that gives a proper commentary to us as a people. Western history would tell us that we are a people of no history, a people of no God, a people who out of some osmosis in the jungles of West Africa, uh, some uh, missionaries came to save us. But I stopped by this morning to tell you that if you would dig deeper into your history, you would realize that the first five fathers of the church were from North Africa. Amen, somebody. I'm talking about Sentiment Service. I'm talking about Augustine. I'm talking about Polycarp. These men were the ones who would formulate what we would have today as Christianity. There was a breaking away uh, in the Council of Nicaea where the European Pope would argue against the African Popes and they then would split the church. That's why you have an Eastern church and a Western church. But I, 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 I argue this morning that, 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 that we didn't need to have church to have a relationship with God. 
That's a, a historian. Uh, when I was in grad school, a professor by the name of Dr. John Henry Clark, who of Hunter, Hunter College, uh, who was my professor of Africana, Africana studies, he would say that the question was asked, if you look at ancient Africa, why were there so little churches there? And the answer came back that an African scholar said, God is too big to put in a box. The God we serve is everywhere. Amen, somebody. The Bible tells us that all of the Lord are everywhere. He sees all and knows all. Amen, somebody. No, no, no. They didn't give us religion. We've always had religion. But more than that, we had spirituality, the connection to God. Amen, somebody. But again, unfortunately, as an enslaved people, bought 9,000 miles against our will, denied the right to read, denied the right to, to know who we were as a people, we are scattered throughout the diasporic experience or the diaspora trying to find out who we were. And so when we come to this text this morning, the text tells us that we knew who we were. And, 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 and out of our pain, out of our suffering, left is the record that, that God can handle our question. Stop by this morning to tell somebody that, that, that you can talk to God, that you can get angry with God, you can get mad with God, you can, you can have, uh, you can question God. Because the God we serve is so magnificent and so brilliant that it's nothing that you can't ask him that he can't answer you about. Amen, somebody, because we were taught during the time of slavery, don't ask any questions about anything. But my Bible tells me if a man or woman seek of knowledge, ask the Lord and the Lord will freely give it to them. And so they try to keep us ignorant in religion, but in trying to erase us out of history, the Psalm tells us, they say, by the rivers of Babylon, we sat and we wept. We, we cried as we remembered our homeland, as we remembered our ancient civilizations of art and math and science and, and families and structures and religion. We remembered. We wept. We wept so much so that, that they took us out of one cultural container and they placed us into an artificial container. And there, those who wasted us, those who raped us, those who hung us, those who sold us, those who split families up, they asked of us a song. And yet we still had enough strength Answer back, even if it changed, how can, I, how can we sing a new song in a strange land? When you really look at, when we look at our entertainers, our entertainers historically have entertained society that they remember or they remember us as as artists and singers and tap dancers and, and all of these things that they couldn't see beyond our, that, that we had a deeper intellect than just dancing and just singing. But there were, in the spirit of the Mitchell family, there were abolitionists, there were folk who were about 
the liberation of us as a people. It is unfortunate that in 1863, when some of the world, or some of the United States, pardon me, were emancipated. This Merlin government decided to still keep its population enslaved. They kept them enslaved because they wanted to keep the cotton production in Merlin. But you had fighters like Frederick Douglass, who was a member of this church, who stood in this pulpit with William Lloyd Garrison, another abolitionist, to speak about the freedoms of us as a people. A man by the name of Isaac Myers of the Maya Time Museum, he was a ship caulker down in Fells Point where he would help enslave and free men to work on the bottoms of the ships. The Irish and other Europeans didn't want to work uh, this dangerous job, but we needed a job. And yet, they were able, with this job, to raise a family, to take care of themselves, and to come to this church on Sunday morning. Men and women of this church, almost over, uh, will be almost 300 years now, brick by brick, would bring bricks and mortar from jobs that they worked on. The women would make sandwiches and they would build this building. Sharp Street United Methodist Church, Memorial United Methodist Church, this church without a bank finance. But from the pennies, nickels, and dimes of a believing and a faithful people, we come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, somebody yeah. out of this church came uh, the basis and the foundation for uh, Morgan State University. It used to be the Morgan School, really, for seminary students would ultimately wind up in the educational system that would produce PhDs and 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 our brightest minds. We did this with nothing but a hope and a prayer and the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and faith in ourselves and community. As we move further in time, in the chronology of time, we would then uh, come to the 60s where uh, we would wind up moving in this, into this uh, liberation explosion of a Dr. King, Martin Luther King and a Malcolm X and and as we deal with the political agitation of Merlin, we would have voices like uh, Heron J. Mitchell. Amen, somebody. Clarence Mitchell III. We, we would have uh, his, 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 his grandmother that would, that would in 1954, Eleanor Roosevelt would come here. And he and his grandmother would converse about the segregation of the Meyerhoff Symphony Hall. First time Eleanor Roosevelt would ever come to Maryland because of the influence of the Mitchell family and that voice. The Maryland politics of this, of this city 
is impacted by that voice. Politics of this city right now is not that, it's not as great as it was when, when, when the Mitchells were active in the politics of that day. Amen, somebody. Pray God that we would find and have a few more of those kinds of spirits that would help to further us along the way. I'm not going to tell you how to vote this morning, but I'm going to tell you this morning that voting is important. Folk died that we might be able to invoke, to vote. Folk died that we might be able to in, in, invoke our voice, our, our, our principles that will change community. Amen, somebody. Although, I'm going to leave that alone. I Get out and vote. We got to vote. But 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 the, the psalmist, the psalmist this morning is all he's saying is three things. The first thing the psalmist is saying that God hears your prayer. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but if ever you get to a place in your life where you can't talk to anybody about anything, you're gonna have to take it to the Lord. Amen, somebody. Because sometimes only the Lord can change your situation. Amen, somebody. And, 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 and you know what? It's, it's all right sometimes when you come to church and don't feel like praising. Because the problems that, that face us every day sometimes are so insurmountable, so daunting that you'll feel like those who place their harps on the willow tree. And that does not make you less saved than I am. It means that I don't feel right now like praising when you don't know what's on my mind. Amen, somebody. They, 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 they place their hearts on the willow tree and they cry. It's nothing wrong with crying. Sometimes you got to get it out when nobody else is understanding you. Amen, somebody. Sometimes you just gotta, sometimes you just gotta cry and say, Lord, I can't do it, but I need you to do it. God, I need you to fix this situation that I have no power over. Amen, somebody. God, I'm going in the hospital tomorrow, and, and I don't know whether or not I'm coming out, but, but I'm giving it to you. Lord, I, I got a son that's way with a daughter that's way with, and I'm praying that they might come back home. I, I'm doing well for myself. I live the best I can. I do the best I can, but it's all something that is affecting my life. It's all right to cry because God hears your cries. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right to tell God take the wheel because I can't do it. One of the time, one of one, there was a time when all of our churches were filled. Prior to COVID, the, the, the history of the black church, you couldn't get a seat anywhere. Prominent families sat here and folks sat there and, and the balconies were full. But then when you look at the history, you realize that that as, as we as a people became more successful, when we begin to move out of certain neighborhoods, we begin to uh, live in various, uh, various areas that the tax base where we once lived depreciates and and the community change. 
There are more of us who are graduates and, and postgraduates and, and PhDs and, 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 and live beyond certain salaries that we, we couldn't imagine. And with all of this success, with all these homes, with all this education, we have left God. When the Mitchells were fighting for, 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 for public accommodations and, and the right to vote and, 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 and those things that we take for granted, now church was filled. When we had racist supervisors that talked to us and called us boy. That's why we always, when we talk, we always in the argument, we say, I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm a man. Man, you talking to me? I'm a man. Because for the longest time, they called grown men boys. And to cope with dealing with that day-to-day -day insult from Monday to Friday, we found ourselves in church on Sunday talking to the Lord. But as we got successful in our personal lives, many have left the old landmarks, the foundations that brought them over. I stopped by this morning to tell somebody, you can't destroy the bridge that brought you over. You can't destroy them. You can't neglect the history that got you where you and I are at this present time. Because it was folk who didn't have a third grade education that could build a balcony with no pillars. Mothers who could scramble, who could make a meal for 13 children and never eat out at a restaurant that make cakes and pies and made dinner every day of the week and we never went home. Now we have half million dollar houses and we, we have full refrigerators and we open the door full to the brim and still say there's nothing to eat. Folk in houses that, 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 that were denied the right to go to Hoshu Cones and Heck Company and, and they, in almost every house, had a sewing machine and they made clothes. And they made sure we had Sunday go to meeting clothes. And now we get our clothes finally made and tailored. We go to a closet the size of a city block and look at it Sunday morning and says, I don't have nothing to wear. St. John's and Louis Vuitton and the finest clothes, a hundred going across the rack, and you late for church because I don't know whether or not I'm gonna put this hat with these shoes, or what do you think about this with this vest with this tie? We're standing on the shoulders of a people who didn't have much but made a lot out of nothing. Here we are, a generation that have a lot and don't have nothing. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. We had our stores. We had our corner stores. We had our restaurants. And I got to drop this on our young people. We have buses and cabs. 
History teaches us that we didn't have it. People think that because of the Montgomery bus boycott that, that we were graciously allowed to sit on their buses in Montgomery. Well, when we begin to sit on their buses, the black cab drivers and the black bus companies went under in the name of integration. Think about that. Everybody want to be like us, but don't nobody want to be us. Amen, somebody. They take our dance, they take our clothes, they take our slang, but they don't want to be us. Um, I got a co-worker, he, 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 he's, he's dark as a, 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 a Hershey's chocolate bar. And when I, and, and when I talk to him, he says, uh, I'm half Chinese. I say, tell that to the police. Yeah, what he stop you? I can't see it. And I don't have a magnifying glass to see it. You look like me. Amen, somebody. And he very well might be. It might have been, he might have been a, a, a military, whatever. He might have been, you know, in the military. And my dad might have married, a, you know, a Japanese person or a Chinese person, whatever it was. Or he might just out been lying, you know. But, but whatever it is, I stopped by to say, we got to love ourselves. We got to love how God made us. We got to remember that we were born into Babylon. We got to remember that we were born into a system that made us anti-us. Amen, somebody. I got a buddy that's sitting in the back. He said, man, you know, you living in the, you in this 300 year old church and you got this real big hundred foot fresco, a statue of Jesus Christ. I said at that time, that was the mindset of our people. But my God, said that I was made in the image and in the likeness of him. Amen, somebody. And I say that to say that gave uh, Frederick Douglass and, and Isaac Myers and Nat Turner and uh, Sojourner Truth and all of these people, the self-confidence, uh, 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 the self-awareness, yeah, that my God looks like me. This is, this is what we had to come, come through. And this is what our grandparents prayed that we would evolve out of. That we would have an expression of ourselves. That we would give a proper commentary to who we are. Look at this for a second before I take my seat. Listen, the Chinese have Buddha, Thothrosis, and other prophets. The Jews have Moses and, and Maimonides and other prophets. The Arabs have Muhammad and a few other prophets. But when it comes to us, what are you saying, God? Why you give this, why you go in your bag and you give out your profits? Would you leaving us out of the process? No, 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 no. This is why he gave us the intellect to be able to, to, to hermeneutically and theologically see ourselves in this book. Amen, somebody. And that when we read this book, although it speaks of a people, it's really talking about us as a people. Abraham 
Know of a sure that you shall, your, your people shall be a slave for 400 years. And, and they will be made to serve a people for 400 years. Then after that time, God speaking, I will come. And I will judge that people of whom you serve. And I will then elevate you to a place of prominence. We have done so much with so little from a people that kept us from nothing. And yet the God we serve, that's this form of our faith. With the mind and the ingenuity of God Himself. Lift up your heads, open your gates, and be lifted up the everlasting doors, and the King of Glory shall come in. This King of Glory is the Lord strong and mighty. This King of Glory, He's the Lord mighty in battle. And you do today, the Lord. Come on, somebody, do something. The Lord has won our battles, do. Jim Crow, the Lord has won our battles, do. Uh, the Lord has won our good God Almighty. The Lord has won our and the Lord is still fighting our. We might not be somebody that got someone to go. But the faith of our father. That's in our blood has, has prompted us. Good God Almighty. Has prompted us to, to do more than. To do more than. We, we, we thank, we thank the Mitchell family. We could not thank them enough for for the landmark cases that they won, for the, for the influence that they have brought to the public sphere. We need more of that kind of bravado, that kind of bravery, that kind of truthfulness, that kind of, uh, uh, if you will, uh, a tenacity to look things, systems right in its face and call it what it is. If you go across the street in our museum, there are artifacts, pipes of Frederick Douglass, an ex-slave who became a free man that ran to Maryland. You'll see pictures of Isaac Myers. You'll see pictures of the Mitchell family. We have a vast history that we can take for granted. My grandmother, she was here for 50 years. She had a massive heart attack in 1996 in the back of the church. Yeah. Yeah, she 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 had a hard hit grandson that got in trouble that didn't finish the seventh grade. Yes, she prayed. And many of us are here on the prayers of our parents and grandparents, even though they are gone. That God will answer prayers. I know it's a fact. I know it's a fact because I started out with my master of my bachelor's at Coppin State at 40 years old. Received a bachelor's in history from Coppin State because somebody said I could and I said I could. I left there. In the background of my life, my father serving life and my mother an addict because somebody said I couldn't, I said I could. I wound up going to the University of Delaware where I received my master's in history and cultural anthropology. 
because somebody said I could not, said I could, I wound up going to the Sammy DeWitt Parker School of Theology at Virginia Union in Richmond, Virginia, where I received the Masters in Divinity and married somebody. And in one more semester, I have a PhD from the, from the United Theological Seminary in Ohio, where many teachers have received their PhD. That God can do it. The spirit of my grandparents, the spirit of your grandparents, we owe to them to make a better society. And so we thank the Mitchell family. We thank all those who have been unsung heroes who have rolled up their sleeves that may have never got a thank you. We thank you because had it not been for them, we wouldn't be as far as we are. We remember Zion, our home. We hung our harps on the willow trees because although we stopped, we didn't give up. Amen, somebody. Over my head, I hear music in the air. With all the songs, songs of liberation. Over my head, I hear music in the air. Over my head, I hear music in the air. I don't have time to stay here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we've been fighting a long time. We've been running a long time, and and so it's not about you, and it's not about me. It's about our the next generation, the next generation that we might leave them a legacy of education, a legacy of opportunity, a legacy of employment. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Let the truth sing. Let the truth sing. Let the truth sing. Amen. 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 Go in peace and may the peace of God be with you. Have a blessed day in the Lord. Have a great week. And don't forget the vote. Amen.